Hi, this is David. Today I'm going to talk about unit testing your .NET application. There are a lot of frameworks that can assist you in that, and one of those is xunit.net, which I'll refer to as simply xunit. xunit.net can be found on the web at https colon whack whack xunit.net. It's a free open source tool, and it is designed to help you test your .NET applications. You don't really need that page. You can simply go to Visual Studio and add a project because there's a template for xunit.net. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test. I've got a really simple function here. It's a project called demo xunit. It has one class, math functions, and it has methods to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And just to keep things simple, I'm just going to test this add method right here. It does nothing more than take in two integers and return the sum of those integers. Let me create a test project. I'll right click on my solution and I will say add new project and then I'll search for xunit and you'll see there are multiple templates for this. I want the one that's in C sharp. You can use whichever one you want but uh, that's the language with which I am most familiar and uh, I'm going to call it demo xunit dot tests. I like to have one test project for each project that I'm testing and I like that naming convention. It makes it obvious that this is tests for the demo X unit project. I'll use the same version of .NET. I have the latest long-term support version which today is 3.1 and you can see that it's it's right uh, that it creates one class in here. I'm, I'm going to just delete that class right now and add a new one. I could edit it if I wanted to but I'll say add a new class and I'm going to test math functions so again I like to have one class to test each class that I'm testing here so math functions tests as well call it there's my naming convention that should be obvious I'll make it public and I want to make sure this thing knows about that project so first thing I need to do is to add a reference in my test project I'll add a reference to the project that I am testing right here and then in my class I'll say using and then the namespace is demo exit so using demo exit make sure it knows about that all right um, now I want to create a method for testing in fact I'll create a method for testing this add method it'll be a public method it doesn't return anything, it just does things. And I'll call it test add given positive inputs should return sum. I like long names for my test method, long and descriptive names for what I'm doing here. Um, and then I also like to have, I always like to think about how I'm going to set up my test. Tests typically We'll have three steps. Arrange, act, assert. The three A's right here. Arrange is any environment things I want to set up. Do I need to uh, create some classes? Do I need to initialize some variables? Things like that. Um, act is actually going to do the thing that I'm testing. In this case, call that add method. And then assert it will validate that the thing that I'm testing did what I expect it to do. So I usually put these comments in right away to remind me. And it's possible there might not be any arranged, but in this case there is. I need to initialize a couple of variables. Int first number equals, and I'll just pick a number here, 15 is fine. Int second number equals, let's say, 30. Um, and then I want to act. I want to actually call that method. So I'll say var math functions equals new math functions right here and then int result equals math functions dot add and I'll pass in first number and second number. Now I know that 15 plus 30 is 45 and I just want to validate that that's true. So did my method properly, this, this result should return 45. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an object called assert. 
and that's in the X unit framework. So if I say control dot here and use add using X unit, then it adds this up at the top here, and I'll say assert dot, and you'll see that there are methods in here for doing things like validating that two values are equal, validating that some statement is true or false, validating this saying that something is uh, not null, things like that. In this case, I want to validate that two things are equal, and the two things would be my expected result. You can see in the IntelliSense here, the first value should be accepted, and I expect a 45 to come back, and the actual result, which is this right here, R-E-S-U-L-T, right here, I want to validate that what came back is what I expected to come back. All right, and let me just build that really quickly. And yeah, it compiles, but there's one more step that I need to do. I need to tell XUnit that this is a test. And there are a few ways to do that, and the simplest way is by just adding the word fact as an attribute at the top of that method. And you notice something appeared over here. This is the test explorer. And I had that open already, but you can go to test, test explorer right here and find it as well. And what happened is that if I expand this, you'll see there's my test right here. And it's hierarchical, so it's, it shows that that's part of this class, which is part of this project, which is part of this solution right here. And the reason that's important is because I can use this test explorer to run my test. So I can just right click and run just this test or all the tests in this project or all the tests, I'm sorry, all the tests in this class or all the tests in this project or all the tests and so on. And there's also up here some buttons here to run everything. And you can also, as well as running, you can debug as well. Um, and uh, debugging is the same as running, except that you're allowed to set breakpoints and step through and view values and take advantage of all the nice debugging tools in Visual Studio. So I think this is all right here. I'm going to right click on this here and say run that. And there are build errors for some reason. I'm not sure why I got this earlier. I'm going to just close the solution and reopen it. I think it has to do with the fact that I am, uh, that I've been playing around with this all morning. It's caching some results. So let me just open it up again. And really quickly clean the solution and rebuild it here. And as I said, I can come down here and expand Here we go. Open these up and expand this and right click and just run this one test here and then it worked. So whatever was cached was flushed out by closing Visual Studio. Um, I can also run it or debug it from right in here. Right click and say run tests or debug tests. Um, and that will run because I'm inside of this method. It'll just run this one test method. If I click inside of the class but outside of the method it'll run or debug all of the tests in this class. Right now there's only one, but typically you'll have more than one. And I'll do that. I'll debug this time. And now you can see I can step through this. Step, step, step. I'll step into here. Step, step, step. And, and I can take advantage of hovering over this and seeing what the value of each thing is and seeing the value is 45. And that's, I'll just continue to show that it's done. And this green check mark means it passed. If for some reason it failed, let's say that I had a bug in my function and I accidentally did that right here. Now the function is broken. I'm testing and it should fail. So I'll come up here and I'll say run all tests. It won't hit that breakpoint because I'm not debugging. And you see that it failed right there. And it even gave some indication down here. It expected 45 and it got negative 15. My test is revealing to me that this is broken. And finally, what I'm going to do is, it's uh, you know, this is kind of the happy path. I probably want to test other things about this. So I'm going to repeat this test pretty similarly, but I'll make three copies of it and I'll rename them and say instead of given positive numbers, I'll give given negative inputs. And here when I add negative 15 and negative 30, I would expect negative 45, maybe uh, given positive 
are given how about mixed inputs I'll do uh, negative 15 and 30 and that should result in the number 15 uh, you can do whatever you want here. This is um, it's just a good idea to have some, you know, edge cases. Maybe maybe zero is special. Sometimes negative numbers make a difference. Sometimes I was expecting a uh, a number in a certain format. You want to test that it it behaves properly when you don't have that. And it, so as I added these three, you notice they showed up here. This blue exclamation point means it's never been tested yet. So what I can do is I can run all three of those tests right here compiles them and they all passed. Negative 15 plus negative 30 is in fact negative 45. Negative 15 plus 30 is 15 and this one is still true. Now there are other ways besides fact to decorate your test to give you more flexibility and I will cover those in a future video. But for now I've shown you how to use XUnit to create a test project and build unit tests to test your .NET application. This is David. Thank you for watching.